What's up everybody, Noisy here with a deadlock video. Today I'm going to show you how you can take over a game completely once you get ahead of your opponents in one of my replays here. I'll try to keep it as educational as possible and if you have any questions feel free to pop into my Twitch stream or just send me a message on Discord or Twitter. All right, so let's get right into this replay. So the whole point of this replay is to show you how to take advantage of your leads and just how to always stay active in your games. At the start of the game, you definitely want to just focus on farm. You can poke a bit here and there and you can punish the enemies if they do mistakes, which you will see. Um, but the main thing is just to farm. I like to go into the Veil here and shoot the, the first minion that I see and then go in for the punch to make sure that it doesn't get denied. Warden does have the same idea, so I just have to get out of there and instantly try to farm. I go for this minion here, but Yamato punishes me with a punch and her one ability chunks me quite low here to be honest and it just forces me to play back just focusing on farm here with my teammate my vindicta is quite healthy so there's not too much to worry about i do um in case you're wondering what build i'm running on shiv i made my own i'll post a screenshot on the screen right now and you can also search for it in game it's um, mostly gun based i'm not a big fan of the spirit build on shiv as i feel it falls off too much in the late game and if you get caught it gets super super hard so I prefer playing around this gun and building around that. My Vinicta gets the Yamato quite low here. They're, they're playing way too aggressive to be honest and they don't understand how much kill potential we actually have in a lane. They're both super super low. I know I can kill the Warden here. And I know that I can chase the, the Yamato but my Vindicta can. So I just get straight back to farming as that's the number one priority. And I let my Vindicta deal with the Yamato here. We could be focusing the tower here in terms of just damaging it and getting it lower, but I make a call to just take the wave in order to deny the enemy laners as much as possible. We get the minions down, uh, sorry, the troopers as they're called in this game, and I go back for my first buy. On Shiv, if I'm winning the lane and I'm getting quite a bit of souls over the enemy laners, I like to rush Suppressor first. It is, it's such a crazy item in lane because when you throw your knife, you proc Suppressor and Suppressor reduces the, their fire rate by 25%. And one of your main sources of damage, especially in the early game, is your gun. And shooting that 25% slower, just it just it feels so bad. It, it gives you such a big advantage in lane on Shiv if you can do that. If the lane is harder, then you can always go the green items. You can go extra, extra regen, extra health. Uh, you can even buy healing right if you feel like you need to, but if you do end up in a lane like this where we manage to just secure two kills early on and just get a massive lead, you can just, yeah, just rush Suppressor and just take the lane from there. While farming with my teammate here, just trying to deny as much as possible and just keeping the enemies behind their tower so they can't really do much. Um, while doing this, I'm keeping an eye on the minimap to make sure that we're not getting ganked. The lane next to us has a Kelvin and a 7. Kelvin ganks can be a bit scary as he got, he got buffed recently. His beam slows you by 80%, which is kind of crazy. So just keeping an eye there and actually seeing how aggressive we can play. If they would go missing on the minimap, we would play a bit further back. And as you can see now, the trooper wave is pushing back to us. So just playing it slow on our side, trying to find a timing to buy something here. And I'll buy close quarters and headshot booster instantly as we are ahead and you just start stacking a bit of damage. Poking with my knives to reduce their fire rate also makes it way, way harder for Warden to farm because Warden's bullets are extremely slow. It's really, really hard to contest a Vindicta and Shiv, especially because Shiv has a shotgun. I feel like shotguns in the game have a... It's, it's very easy to farm with a shotgun for sure. Just reducing his fire rate, it, it just makes his farming a, a living hell. Yeah, just playing through the laning pace here. Our goal right now, honestly, since we are quite a bit ahead, is to just push them as far back as possible and try to get the tower down as soon as possible. One nice thing, uh, or one thing that you should be keeping track of, is the souls up here of the enemy. You need 3,000 souls in order to get your ultimate ability. So if you get 3,000 souls before the enemy laners, you have a very, very big advantage in lane, and they, they have to respect that. Especially now that they're laning against a Shiv and Vindicta, which both have executes. I, I can execute with my ultimate ability, and Vindicta also does bonus damage with her uh, sniper shot at a certain threshold. So they, they really have to respect both of us now. We both have our ultimate, and I just go back and buy some green items 
I don't really need more damage right now. I'm just building a bit of HP and extra stamina so I can move faster and, and catch people off guard. And right now we're roughly, I would say, about a thousand souls ahead in lane. One interesting thing is that kills in lane, actually, they don't give you a lot of souls. Like, you... A lot of people think that focusing on kills is the way to win in lane, but you you don't really gain much. And especially after the first kill you get, they can just zip line speed back to lane and, and they don't lose much at all. So just focusing on farm and poking, I think is more important. And especially if you get them low and you force them to go back to base to heal, that is essentially worth more than a kill because you will just, you will deny them more farm. And I, and I think that you'll get more souls in the long run. Right here, the ward is just out of position. I just hear him shooting in there, and I thought that we can go all in. Still, we have the we have the ultimate ability advantage, and the reason why we're not really chasing after the Yamato right here is because Yamato has her ultimate, which basically makes her invincible for a couple of seconds. So there's no point. Like technically, we could try to push up and dive the Yamato here, but it it just doesn't make any sense. Like we'll just poke the Yamato down, push the tower here, and get that over with. One thing you can do here is you can crouch slide like my Vindicta was doing there to get unlimited bullets. But to be completely honest with you, I was just very lazy this game and I just didn't do it at all. But I could have done that to be more optimal. The Yamato is staked here. We could have definitely just went for the Yamato right there. But again, just there's no point. Like We just get the creeps here and we instantly move to the next wave. And while we do this, we also farm. We take there because now we open up their side of the map. We take their tower. I also hear the warden ult there, by the way, so this way I turn. But um, on our way, after we break the tower, we just take their jungle camps as we go and their boxes because we open up the map for us. They can't really do much to stop us right now, and we have an insane amount of control over the game right now. I'm just taking whatever we can. And uh, one, one key thing with Shiv is once you unlock your 4 ability, it's really important to try to build as much rage as possible and being efficient with it. One quick way of building rage is to punch creeps, so the jungle monsters here, and also to punch the troopers, because you, that is that is the fastest way to generate rage as you go. And the higher rage you have, the better, because when you have a full rage bar, your abilities become way stronger. Alvin Waste's ultimate there. I could have chased him, but again, there's no point. We're just going to play the objective and just try to deny them as much as possible. You really, in this game, you really don't need to greed for kills. As long as you push the enemy back and you force them off you, you can just do so many things right now. As you see, like, we're just, we're creating so much space. We're grabbing the second tower already. And that's done. I'm on 3,000 souls and I'm just going, just going to the shop, buying my kinetic dash, buying my berserker. Just getting stronger, and as you can see, just sustaining my rage as I go, and farming as I go too, buying more green stuff, some more movement speed. Right here on the minimap, I see my teammates. My teammates are just pushing, they're just pushing the wave, and uh, I just take the minions before, I, I don't feel like I need to join them instantly. And now we have the wave pushing up, and we can just, yeah, just keep pressuring the enemies and going for the next tower. What's super important is to just always feel like you're doing something. Try not to have any sort of time or dead time or whatever you want to call it. Like always have a plan in mind. Whenever you're breaking, like whenever breaking this tower, like always think about okay, what's next? Right now we actually we get chased by the enemy. Abram's ults on us stuns me, but yeah, we just try to get out. There's no point in fighting this. Being alive is way more important than being dead. If you die, you you can't farm, you can't generate souls. We trigger Yamato ult there. Haze is massively out of position. I catch her with my ultimate ability. I look for the Yamato and just, yeah, again, no point to chase. I could go for the 7 there, but... You know, it, you, it will be a reoccurring theme in this video. There's just no point in chasing right now. We have such a massive advantage and such a massive lead. Like, I'm, I'm 4,000 up on the Yamato and Warden. The only... Players that I would say could match me right now is probably the Abrams and the Haze. I hear someone farming here. And I'm trying to make a decision if I'm actually gonna follow. I make the decision to just deny some troopers. I see the Kelvin. Try to scare him off. He gets staked by the Vindicta. He's forced to pop his ult and then I'm just taking the fight here. Kelvin dies. 
That's another thing to think about. Whenever you are behind and you know that the enemy team is stronger, you, you really need to respect them. The Kelvin did not respect the Vindicta there at all. He got staked and stunned to the ground, which enabled me to just catch him. And he had to force his ult out, and we essentially just we get to push the walker here and deal an enormous amount of damage to it. And even though I am very far ahead right now, I'm still respecting distance and the opponents. We could have overstayed and possibly died for the walker, but we want to stay alive and we want to stay active on the map, so... We keep our farm consistent. Also break boxes as you go, break the golden urns too, because they give you permanent buffs throughout the game. Everything adds up. So if there is any any downtime, if you're doing if you're just pushing a wave and all the troopers are dead, just go for some boxes. Trying to scare the Abrams away here. The next goal is just to try to get the walkers down, generate extra souls for the team, and to unlock more flex slots. The Abrams is playing super aggressively. He's not respecting he's not respecting the space at all. I understand that he wants to get the farm, but he's losing a lot by just staying. Stefan joins him. We respect their space. Abrams holds in. I'm just trying to get out and sustain myself. My Vindicta's about to join me, we're in a 2v3. I could have parried Abrams right there. But I did not react to it, still trying to, to put that into my brain. Whenever you do that, so if you go into the sandbox or whenever you're in game guys, whenever you charge up a punch, it does a very distinct sound. And that sound should be a cue for you to parry. So for those of you who don't know, you can parry in this game. So the default keybind for punch is Q, and the default keybind for parry is F. If you press F and somebody punches you, they get stunned for a couple seconds and you can deal a lot of damage to them. I saw that Haze was out of position on the minimap, which is why I teleported over. I called for my Mo to follow me and we just chased down the Haze. I go back to ensure that the minion wave is pushing. And I push this wave as well because we just killed Haze. There's not really gonna be anyone contesting. We've spotted several players on the minimap, so no point. You can just grab the wave and uh, go back and whenever you're pushing waves it will always force someone to go there you can see that seven is in the area and he's he's forced to be stuck on the bottom left walker on the minimap right now Hayes, we don't know this information yet but you see Hayes is also forced to just join that which means that you know we we just delivered urn for free and uh, i see that my mcginnis is close to abrams and I can just teleport right here. The teleporter is open at 10 minutes and they recently added this teleport here in, in the most recent patch and you can just teleport between each sides of the map. It's super super good to just be fast and be efficient. It looks like my McGinn has pushed Abrams away and I make the call to, to just get the walker here. I am very stacked on cash so it's good to um, for me to go back and buy something right now. It's important to not be not hold your money for too long, which is a very common mistake in this game. If you have money and you and you can spend it, definitely try to do so. Obviously don't sacrifice other objectives just to go and buy. But if you do have the opportunity, just try to spend your money because items is what's gonna make you stronger than the enemy team. Of course you get levels with souls and your character gets stronger, right? But try to just spend that money whenever you can. Especially if there's downtime. I mean, I, there's nothing really for me to do on the map right now. So I'm just going to the shop to spend. I buy a slowing hex. Because if I catch, some, if I catch someone in a 1v1 fight, they, they just they can't escape. It's impossible for them right now. I throw my knife, I trigger my suppressor, their fire rate goes down. I put slowing hex on them and they, they cannot escape. Right now, with us so much, so far ahead, and I'm just so farmed this game, and so strong in terms of items. There's just there's not super much to do on the map. The goal is just to grab the walkers and try to punish the enemy team as much as possible. We have about a twenty thousand soul lead right now at fifteen minutes, which is it is a crazy lead, and I feel like a lot of this disadvantage was created in the early game with us winning our lane very hard, just making sure that we out farm, and then. Just pushing that lead and getting all the tower, tier 1 towers. 
I do make a massive mistake here. I'm going to skip forward a bit with the death there. I don't want to waste too much of your time. But I do make a massive mistake there. I thought that my teammates would be staying on the walker as we had the minion wave pushing up. But they didn't stay and I committed to a fight that I shouldn't have. I think that is that is probably the only major mistake that I have this game. But uh, I reflected a lot on that. It just wasn't worth it. There was no point in me doing that. I'm coming back here. I see that my team is in a fight. I'm thinking to myself if it is winnable. I try to just hover around the enemy team. You see, I'm not really fully committing to going in. Elvin, ult, and Haze just... I, I have no clue why the Haze runs into this hallway. Shiv is extremely strong in hallways, by the way. Because when you have a, a full rage meter and you dash, you essentially get a second dash right behind you that deals a lot of damage. And it's so easy to hit the opponents in hallways, so... If there are if there's fights in tight spaces and you have you're strong on shiv you're you're ahead of the enemy team and you have a full rage bar you just just send it just dash through do a lot of damage and just go also i've been getting a lot of questions uh, as to if it's worth to go heroic aura or warp stone on shiv and i would say it's it's very situational but i really really like heroic aura because First of all, it increases the trooper's attack speed around you actively whenever you're just around them. So it's it's super easy to push waves. Also, when you activate Heroic Aura, you get movement speed and you get increased fire rate for yourself and your teammates around you. So I just think it's such a good tool to, to take objectives. If you're going for towers, if you're going for walkers with teammates, you just pop it and, and everybody just shoots so fast. Also for the mid boss, it's super, super good. And again, right now, not super much to do on the map. I'm just farming to make sure to stay ahead. And then I see sevens here. Uh, put slowing hex on him instantly. He cannot get out. Doesn't matter what he does to me. I'm not taking any damage. I don't even, I don't need to do anything there. Just straight up get a kill. Whenever there isn't an objective to do on the map, there's no air up. There's no... Like, we've gotten all walkers, there's not really super, super much to do. The main thing is that I would say that you should be doing is just pushing waves, just making sure that the state of your waves is, is pushed up, because if, if the state of your waves is bad, you can't really do super much if you get picks. Like, let's say, let's say the minion waves are, like, if you see my mouse here, let's say all minion waves are on this line here, right? And you kill three of the enemy opponents. You can't really do super much on the, on the map, because you have to push waves. Whereas if, let's say, the minion waves are like around this line here, and you kill three of them, you have waves to just instantly get the tier 3 towers here in their base, or just go straight for the mid boss. So it's it's just important to keep waves, uh, waves pushed. When waves are pushed, you can also look for picks, because, like I said earlier, whenever waves are pushed up, they have to send people there. If you're super, super strong, you can catch somebody off guard and get a pick there, and then just snowball from there. And right now, I'm just... Uh, Doing the ancient uh, creeps right here, the jungles. Shiv is really, really, really fast at taking them, and with the teleporter teleporting you from each sides of the map, you can grab both of them very fast. It's a lot of souls. I'm sitting on 8,500 right now, and I'm gonna look to spend very, very soon. Another thing, if you do have waves pushed up on the enemy side, right now we, uh, I'm not on the enemy side, I'm on my own side, but if you do have them pushed up, you can just deny the enemy jungle as much as possible too, because the, the only way for the enemy team to come back right now, if we are playing a good game, is for them to essentially win a fight, which would require a lot of coordination and a lot of mistakes from our side, or to just sit back and farm, because they will get naturally get waves pushed to them, because that's what we're doing, and they can also go into their jungle. And if we are on their side farming their jungle and trying to just catch them whenever they do so, they they're in a state where they can't do anything. Like, right now, we are essentially in full control over the game. And I'm just, um, yeah, just pushing waves and looking for picks and just seeing if anything happens. You don't necessarily need to force anything because that, that's often when mistakes occur and that's often when the enemy team get a chance to come back. It does happen in a lot of games, like even in, in high MMR games like this one, comebacks do happen a lot and a lot of mistakes happen. It's, just, it's bound to happen, so there's nothing to to tilt about or get upset about it's just the flow of the game right now the buff spawned and the the buff spawned and the weren't earned spawned 
Uh, in terms of buff timer and earn timer, it's every 5 minutes. So on the 5, so first earn spawn is at 10, second is at 15, and it just rotates like that. If you're nearby to a buff, like definitely try to grab it. I'm super tanky now because I grabbed the survival buff earlier. I'm at 3000 HP and I don't, I don't have any crazy tank items, honestly. Just very, very strong. I see that Seven is trying to push a walker here, and this I, I do not want to give them anything for free. If he wants this walker, he's going to have to die for it, and us being 6v5, just we can just run down the enemy team after that. Like we can we can already do this, but just getting him off the map, even if he gets the walker there, he's just not gonna get it for free. Also, in case you're wondering, those the big orb that I just picked up it was unsecured souls and the way unsecured souls work in the game is that uh, they're already accounted for in your souls but if you die you drop the unsecured ones and you see how the number is ticking down that means that i'm just like there will be less unsecured souls if i die but they're already accounted for in the souls uh, meter nothing gets caught and here i'm just going for a fight they really really want to try to get me but shiv is very very tanky with his three ability Using my 4 as a gap closer, I dash through him because I have a full rage meter. Doing a lot of damage here. Making sure to slow Warden's fire rate down by knifing him because I have Suppressor as one of my items. We get Warden here and it's just a natural uh, mid boss call right here. I pop Heroic Aura and you, you can just see how, how fast the mid boss goes down. When you secure the mid-boss, this is a cue to just do things, because your minions are way stronger, every lane is automatically gonna start pushing, so if you have good wave control, which we do, we have it on two lanes right now, um, so I'm just going here to quickly fix this one. I'm fixing this wave, and then we can just straight up push and, and commit to fighting. Because whenever you have the mid-boss, you can see the, the credit here under the portraits, your if you die your respawn timer is is double as fast so like let's say the respawn timer is 30 seconds if you die it's going to be 15 seconds instead and this is while you have the rejuvenation credit on so right now our waves are super super strong we have the credit from the mid boss and our goal is just to open up their base is really really tries to go for me here i get slapped and uh, we just we're, we're going into a big fight here mo gets caught we're in a 6v5 or 5v6 but we are way stronger i dash through everyone i do a lot of damage calvin ults which kind of griefs them i would have died if he doesn't ult there i'm pretty sure and then warden chases me down i'm very very low hp i notice that he's trying to punch a lot so i look for a parry i parry him finish him off there we have three kills and now we can just open up their base going for the towers Abrams is up there, we're gonna go into their base and look to take the shrines and the patron. But one thing, whenever you're in the enemy's base, you definitely want to try to get a shrine if you have the number advantage or if you're strong enough. At least get one shrine. Uh, maybe Nikta spots Abrams on the minimap here, by the way, so we just... Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why he's here when we're in their base. Um, I'm really not sure. But uh, just grabbing these towers whenever you can is, is super important as well, because if somebody would die on your team now, they can zipline super, super fast. So so downing those towers, the tier 3 towers, the guardian towers, you get a free zipline boost every time you go on that lane. So just having that available, it, it's very nice. And it goes both ways. So like going back here to our base and, and going into their base is going to be super fast. So If you feel like you can't end the game, just get, the sh get at least one shrine to unlock the flex slot. And then go for the tier 3 towers on your way out, if, if the enemy team allows you to. I pop Heroic Aura here and the game is just over. If you have any questions, just feel free to pop it in the comments down below. You can message me on Discord or Twitter as well. And uh, I hope that that you learned something from this one and that you see how you can how quickly you can take over a game with good decision making. I'll show the, the end game stats here too. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.